If anybody's wondering if a fast is hard, it's freaking difficult. Don't think this is gonna be easy because it's not gonna be easy whatsoever. It is simple. It's, it's simple, yeah. It's simple. Just don't come into this thing and like, like you're gonna be macho man, you're gonna push through. Like, you're not him. Like, I promise you, I, th I thought I was him going into a fast. You get humbled quickly. In this video, we're gonna walk you through our seven day fasting journey that we just completed, and we're gonna talk about all the pros and cons that we think from fasting and what we're gonna do moving forward. The reason why we did this fast is we were feeling like God was calling us to fast. If you follow us on Instagram or you've been keeping track with our journey up until this point, we went on sort of a tangent. You fat will never understand. Don't follow us, you stupid Where we started calling a lot of people out for either weight loss practices that we did not believe in and just a lot of BS that we were seeing in the weight loss community that we wanted to address. and. Basically, what it really was, was a lot of BS within ourselves. We found ourselves slipping over the past few years and not really holding ourselves to the accountability that we were holding our clients to. And we wanted to really hold ourselves accountable. And God was calling us to fast any type of food for seven days. And we're actually in the middle of a 21 day fast right now, um, which we'll get into in more detail. But the reason why we were doing this fast is to really get deep into our spirituals and really let our body eat away at itself and call on God to fill our spirit and to fill our energy through His love, His grace, knowing that we will be protected throughout this whole time. And yeah. Yeah, so one of the things too that I really wanted to focus on when I was doing this fast was I didn't want to lose weight as my primary goal for this fast. Like the reason why, like he said, was we wanted to just really connect back with God. And one of the things that you hear about fasting is that yes, it helps out with weight loss, like it's a good way to reset your metabolism, reset your life and everything when it comes to your diet. But really the main focus of a fast should be to get closer to God. Um, you wanna be able to hear God's word, hear God's voice a lot stronger. And one way to do that is by fasting. So what we did is, like we said, we went through the first seven days. And so here's just kind of an explanation of how day one went on the fast. So day one of a fast is always the hardest day of the fast, in my opinion. Maybe one of the one of the top three days out of the seven days that we did. And we started on a Monday. So that Monday, we woke up and, you know, when you first wake up in the morning, you're maybe not as hungry. We're not that hungry in the mornings. Um, but typically around middle of the afternoon or maybe mid-morning is when our hunger starts to kick in. The biggest thing about a fast is that you have to stay true to the word that you said the day before, the night before, whenever you said you were gonna do it, just staying consistent with it and holding yourself to that. Thankfully, we have each other, and so there are times where we might be looking at something like, oh, we wanna eat that, and we just say, no, like, stick to the fast, you're gonna, you gotta stay to it. Um, but if you're doing it by yourself, it's pretty hard, so try to look for someone to fast with when you do a fast, an extended fast, or even maybe more than one day or three days, just so you can stay accountable to yourself, and maybe if you can't do it, someone else can do it for you. Uh, but like I said, on that Monday, you know, around middle of the morning, afternoon time, we started getting hungry and the temptation to eat always comes in. And this is something that we notice is really important to acknowledge in a fast is that you're always going to be tempted to go back and break the fast. You're always going to have an opportunity to just grab a little snack or grab a little m and grab a little man, just a bite of something. Just, just anything just to, to curb your hunger, right? One thing that we have to ask ourselves is not only number one, is this really going to like satisfy me if I did eat this food? Like if it was a Hershey's Kiss. Am I really willing to break my fast over something so small that I know is not gonna fill me up or I'm not gonna get full off of? And two, how am I gonna feel if I quit this? You know, a lot of the times in life, like we've been raised to be quitters. A lot of, I mean, maybe not you and I or us, but a lot of people have been raised to quit and they're so used to just giving up on things that giving up is like second nature. And so one thing that fasting does is allow you to realize, hey, I don't have to quit on myself as soon as things get tough. And so, Again, if you're going through that time where you're looking at something to eat and it's lunchtime, you're like, oh, I haven't eaten. It's been, I haven't eaten since six o'clock yesterday. Like, I deserve to eat. Well, if your goal was to do a 24 hour fast or however long, stick to it. Focus on the result that you want to have afterwards. And so, again, day one, the whole process is just going to be fighting hunger. You're going to be fighting opportunities to eat, snack on something small. Things like jello might come up and you're like, oh, I could just eat it, it's, not, it's nothing, there's not really any calories in it, it, should, it doesn't count. If you ate, it counts. So that was, that was our biggest rule, was like no food. Yeah, so day one, that was one of the toughest days, but then day two comes along and 
you're in it, you know? And, yeah. and one thing that we realized on day two is we can go a long time without eating, like. Two check-in of our 21 day fast. It has officially been over 48 hours on our fast and feeling amazing. Angelo, what do you have to say? What's one thing from day two that you learned? I'm hungry. <laughs> you're gonna start feeling the food from the Sunday that you ate. It's gonna start weaning away and then you're gonna start feeling like your stomach kind of start coming in. Um, that's the only way that I can explain it. And I'm sure the person listening right now, you can understand what we're saying, but um, the food starts to kind of dissolve away and you start really feeling back into your body. Yeah. Um, that was on day two, but really nothing crazy on day two. It was just another day of going through the motions. Um, that was the last day that we did a hard workout. We did go to the gym on the Tuesday. Um, it was, so we didn't, didn't eat Sunday evening. Uh, last time we ate was Sunday evening. I ate Mine, Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Mine, Mine, yeah. His was Sunday morning, mine was Sunday evening. Uh, Monday, no food. Tuesday, no food. Another workout. Uh, but then Wednesday comes along. And that's I want to say something on Tuesday. Oh, go ahead. So, yeah, Tuesday. one thing on Tuesday is the mental battle starts to go away. It's, it's no longer a mental battle at that point. Maybe just a little bit. But like after the middle of the day or Tuesday night, you're like, okay, like I'm in this. Like I, I'm committed. It's always that first day that's hard. So, get past day one. Then you get to day two and the mental battle starts to go away, but it's the physical battle that you start to notice comes in. So like you said, your stomach comes in, you're like, okay, like I've already done one day without eating. I'm no longer have to go back and forth with myself. I'm just not gonna eat, but I'm gonna have to deal with the pain of hunger. So but the, ex the exercise portion, the hard exercise goes oh, away yeah. after day two. Yeah. We we didn't exercise. I did I, day two. The last time I worked out was day five. Um was so. it a good workout though? It was pretty good. It was just no push at all, but it was it was just more of like feeling into my body, like doing some type of motion. Yeah. Um, because a lot of the time during a fast, you're just sitting there. Like we watched every single YouTube video that there exists on YouTube, <laughs> um, and it's like you know what? I actually watch a lot of fasting videos, and the most literally every one. Actually, there's not that many fasting videos. I put this is gonna be a great video, which I'm excited for our account because. There's not many fasting videos out there. <laughs> if you're gonna learn how to lose weight from anybody, it's gonna be from the Vision Twins, okay? So, but yeah, so day three. Um, time goes by really slow on fast, by the way, too. Like if you're sitting there and you're just watching things, like you're just like, oh my gosh, so when's the day gonna end? You're watching a video like this. Literally, you're just watching somebody talk and you're just like watching yeah. it. Like, we took, you know, like five naps during the day. Like just- I didn't, I didn't nap. I, well, I didn't nap, but it was hard for me to wanna get up. Like, so the first two days is really hard and then, Day three though, Wednesday. now, Wednesday. If you're on day three of a fast, this is by far the hardest day of the fast completely because one, you mentally just, you want to quit every single chance you can. And two, the hunger you get and the feelings of pain mm -hmm. is like no other. Like day three of a fast is absolutely by far the hardest challenge, especially if you've got stuff to do during that day. We actually had to move out of our apartment that day. so. <laughs> it was probably bad timing for us to do our fast, but we ended up having to go clean our whole apartment, wipe down, just use our body, use a bunch of energy that we didn't have. You're Actually, getting lightheaded every time you oh, get up. You're getting lightheaded. Oh my gosh, every you're, time you you're, stand. You're about to pass out. Every, it's, uh, <laughs> like you literally are going to pass out every, at every opportunity. So mm -hmm. be careful on day three, like make sure you're drinking water. Um, one thing that we saw is like, make sure you're having sodium. So put like salt packets or something in there. We only drink water and coffee on most of our fasts. Some days we did have some juice, which eh. Have like some natural juices, cause uh, it helps lather your stomach. That's one thing, your uh, stomach becomes like, cause we're drinking so much coffee. It's like the lining on your stomach kind of like dissolves away and you can feel it. Like it's, yeah. it's a cool feeling. You can feel like, you feel skinny, you feel yeah, like you feel, skinny that <laughs> You feel really skinny on a fast. That's, I'm sure everybody's gonna get a kick out of this right here. Is you, you do feel very skinny when you yeah. fast. Um, you feel like a skinny person finally. And I know that if you're overweight or obese, that's one feeling that you've always wanted to feel in your life is feeling skinny. And that is one thing that you do accomplish on a fast is for the first time in your life, you will feel skinny. You're like, oh dang, like food doesn't control me. Like I'm not, I'm not imprisoned in my stomach. I'm not slave to my thoughts. Like, yeah, day three is just really tough though because like we said, we had to do a bunch of stuff that day and we wanted to eat every chance we had. You're super thirsty and you know you can't eat food. It's just, it's literally like mental hell on day three. So be prepared for that. Um, and actually on day three was the first day that I pooped. 
And how I did that, I took an enema, which I thought was weird and crazy by itself. I didn't know what an enema was, but my brother was like raving to me like, you gotta take an enema, they're fired. And I was like, I haven't pooped in a few days. Like, I was like, what's going on here? So I got the enema and you stick it up your butt, you squeeze the juice in, and you wait about five minutes. Oh man, that was the best dookie I ever took in my life. And you that. I didn't poop for days, and I was like, okay, that's crazy. But then after taking the enema, there's so much crap that came out of my stomach system. Like, I don't think you understand. If you take an enema and you have even fasting, your body like wants to regenerate itself and heal itself. And so all the poop that was stuck for, I don't know how long, days, weeks, months left over, you it really just, it still just boom, dropped out. So don't ever think that you can't poop on a fast. Take an enema. I promise you, you got something stuck up in there that needs to come out. Day four. Um, day four. Again, it's that the same thing, you know? Like, yeah, I went, to, I went to Sprouts, man, and, but it's just that feeling of, of, of skinniness, man. Like, that's, that's... Day four check-in. And we are officially in the 180s. Lion. Well, like one minute. Five, five, five. Still cute, though. No, it's straight out, so... <laughs> It's still a lot more to go. Day four. Is it day four? It's an incredible feeling to feel skinny for the for a long period of time. It feels amazing, and we'll get to the after effects on how we feel about fasting moving forward. We're actually on a about a thirty six or thirty six to forty eight hour fast right now. Anyways, hold on, real quick. Day four, though. Let's, yeah. let's get back day, to day four. Day four, day four, four again. Your freaking head hurts, your body aches, you start to feel like soreness like all over your body. Um, you're definitely tired of liquids. You're tired of, yeah, by this time, like you're tired of drinking water, you're tired of coffee, you're tired of juice, like if that's all you've been drinking. And don't do the calorie juice. There's a juice that we drink, it has zero calories, they're little packets you put in your water. That is what made this fast a little bit more bearable. Oh, and also, um, I bought a two liter of sparkling water that you can get from your Stater Bros or your Albertsons or wherever you shop your groceries at. Got some sparkling water, put it in a cup of ice, and you put in the uh, zero calorie packets, I put a Country Time lemonade. I know a lot of people watching this, you know what Country Time is, that the lemonade. Uh, put that in there and you make like a, it's kind of like a lemonade soda type of thing. It tastes really good. It helps you get over the flatness of just drinking water and the same monotony of like the same stuff over and over and over again. Again, day four, your body hurts, head starts to hurt more. But by this point, you're just like kind of accepting all the pain that's going to come with it. You know it's going to suck. You know it just, it's going to keep going. You um, are, you are getting slimmer though. This, are, whole, this yeah. whole time, this whole time you're getting slimmer. If you guys, yeah, if you check the scale, if you check in, the, oh, you're, you're dropping fat, you're dropping um, weight overall. Your leg, our legs, man, turned into hot dogs. I think, like, I realized I like my legs a lot thinner. Like, as a, for a man to be able to move and be swift, having thin, strong legs, um, not even like crazy strong, but like thin, like swimmer type of body legs, athletic legs. You're not as top heavy. Um, so you're not you're not afraid of like hurting your legs. You have a lot less pressure on your legs because you're less top heavy. Um, so your your aches start to go away. Your body does start to regenerate itself. So yeah, this is coming up on day five. So yeah, on, on day four you start feeling a lot less top heavy. So you're not necessarily worried about like falling over. So like if you do get up and you feel like lightheaded, you're not like oh my gosh I'm gonna tear my ACL or like snap my leg because I'm too heavy up top. You're like no like I'm yeah. light up top so I can move around and not worry about hurting my ankles and um, make sure your lights are on in your house too like when you get up because I would get up in the middle of the night and I had to just turn the light on right away because if not like you could just find yourself like holding on to a door like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like hold on let me and then your, your eyes are black you can't see anything and then you start okay okay like yes it, if anybody's wondering if a fast is hard it's freaking difficult don't think this is gonna be easy because it's not gonna be easy whatsoever. Like, but it is. Jared, it is simple. It's simple, yeah. It's simple. Just don't come into this thing and like, like you gonna be macho man. You gonna push through. Like, you're not him. Like, I promise you. I th I thought I was him going into a fast. 
you get humbled quickly. Like you're gonna be praying and fasting. You're gonna be talking to God, reading your Bible. That's what we did most of the days. Read the Bible. Like, how can we just get close to God right now? Because God, you got about everything out of me. Got all my energy. Like, let me just talk to you. Can I hear your voice? Can I hear your word? And you hear it so clearly. It's the most beautiful thing ever. Day five. When you wake up on day five, like, it's almost like, wait, I've been fasting? Like, my head felt clear. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, like, I feel. Okay, so I'm editing the fasting video and I realized that I don't have the clips. The camera must have shut off or something from talking about day five. But basically in short, what happens on day five is that you mentally wake up and you just feel so clear. You have this new energy in your body and I'm not gonna say you physically feel any better, but you mentally feel so clear and you just feel like you came back to yourself and your personality and your true identity. A lot of the times when you're fasting, you break through old barriers of who you used to be. Your personality really starts to deconstruct. You start to realize it wasn't anything that you came up with, but what society put onto yourself. So you start to really come into your own thoughts and your own mind and beliefs that you believe about yourself that other people might not believe, but you believe them, so you know it's true. Anything you wanna say, Calvin, about day five? It's just like, just pushing through the whole time. I mean, that thing is just beautiful. And I think day five, we definitely got some deep revelations, but it was nothing like the revelations that we got on day six, because day six was like a whole new energy. Day six wouldn't have happened, obviously, without day five. So you get like little minor revelations, but day six, before you hit day seven, your mind just expands to a whole new level. And so from that moment on, all my beliefs that I thought about race, about anything was broken from the fact of like, speaking of height and measurements and you know, what is an inch? Like, how can you actually measure that? There's no actual belief, that's just a consensus that we've all agreed upon that this foot is, this is about a foot long and- Okay, I know these are pretty crazy accusations and statements that I'm making, but this is really what started to happen on day six. Like you just really go through some crazy awakenings. It's almost like you took shrooms. We don't promote doing drugs, but basically that's what it felt like. It was just a, a massive shroom trip where your whole brain and whole mind has just deconstructed from reality and you pulled away from the world completely and you just start thinking for yourself. Like it's just all those things that I used to believe were so solid and real started to fall away and I realized, oh my gosh, these are just things that people told me my whole life and I went with it because I thought they knew better than me. And once you realize that nobody knows better than you and nobody knows you better than you, you start to realize like I create my identity of who I am. I have full authority over the beliefs of myself, what I believe about myself, other people's thoughts don't matter. Um, and the only identity that you should truly cling to because none of this stuff in the end of the day really matters. No YouTuber, no TikToker, Instagram, social media influencer, coworker, entrepreneur, business person, artist, like all that stuff, it doesn't matter. It's fickle and it will come to an end someday. But what won't end is your relationship with Jesus Christ and your belief and knowing that you are the son of Christ, you are the daughter of Christ and that you have full authority over this earth and dominion over this earth because what God put into Jesus Christ and said you could do also and you start to really believe it. Like, I, none of this earthly stuff matters. Like, I am connected to God. I'm connected to my source. And that is what we realized after, after day six. Then day seven comes around, and we go to church. And we were just having an amazing day at church. Had a great message. I took notes, and we've been reflecting on the notes this morning. Had a great Bible study. And really just understanding how the devil will try to come and, and break you down. And um, being able to lock the door behind you. And step into your identity and lock the, the negative beliefs out, you lock the devil out, and it's just a great feeling. We got to really connect, we go as a family, and it's just a great time every time. We leave, we go to Costco. I got a slice of pizza, oh, you know what I'm saying? I ate like three days worth of food in one day. You like pizza? That's what I What's the It's custard. Oh, custard. It's I don't like it. I'm not gonna waste my calories. Spit it out. I'm not gonna waste my calories. No? Now wait, that's what something you learned right there? Yeah, if You're I don't not... like it, I don't have to finish it. Mm -hmm. Talk to him. Don't mind if I do. This, I could probably get Oh, yeah. Yeah? I can get that now. 
Sunday. Now, three days for us, right? Like, because our days, calories were like maybe 2,000 calories. I probably had like 6,000 calories. They had a slice of pizza. I had a chicken bake. I had some samples from Costco. I tried the little taquitos. We'll, we'll put up some videos of the food that we ate. We had, I had about like five taquitos. I had some spinach and artichoke dip. We got some eggs and ground. <laughs> we got some eggs and ground beef for the week. Mm. And we basically got some shopping done, ready to eat when we do eat. And just keeping it simple, like we just got, like I said, eggs, ground beef, and cheese, and that's all we really live what on. What was your first meal that you had when you came back? My first meal, I ate four eggs, and I ate some chicken salad that my girlfriend Jess made, and had some cheese. Oh man, oh. sounds so good, right? You can probably hear our stomachs rumbling. We're on a I, just, I just heard his stomach rumble right now. Oh, I thought that was yours. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was yours. I didn't no, know that was bro. my stomach. Hey, sure. the, the feeling of eating, though, guys, it's such a communion type of feeling. When they, when you eat at church, it's called communion. We understand what that is now because it's like a communion feeling. It's a. This is how we spend. No, you want it? It's a coming together feeling. This when is you eat. This, I don't know if I should put this in the video. We used to do shrooms, and when you're on shrooms, you're not hungry. You just want to like sit there and like. I swear, we would just sit there and like this. Zone out. Just sit there and like you're thinking. I don't even know what you're thinking. I don't know what's going on, but just be that's how it felt like fasting. Like truthfully, and I we don't condone oh, drugs. We don't want to do drugs ever again. What? No, no drugs ever again. But the cool thing about fasting is you do get the benefits of I would say being on shrooms without side or something. You do. You un you definitely unlock that part of your brain during that time. I'll say around like day four, day five, especially on day six, it felt like I was on shrooms on day six. Like you definitely don't, You do, and the cool thing about fasting is you don't get the side effects. Cause when you do shrooms, it's a drug. Like it is meant to put- Mess your brain up. It's, it's meant to mess your brain up. It's meant to go into different parts of your brain um, and put it and mess with your psyche. Um, and if it really affects your psyche and there's like a long uh, afterward feeling where you, you're not supposed to, you basically, you, you get a hangover after you do shrooms, so like. And we were I, huge proponents of doing shrooms too. Like we used to say like, cause right now if you do any type of shroom or a drug, like your, your connection to it is because it gives you this feeling of security and happiness. And you have to understand it's, I know it sounds crazy and I know you're gonna be pissed off when we say this. It's a false sense of security. It's a false sense of happiness because there's no other happiness that can come outside of Jesus Christ. I'm, it sounds crazy, it sounds ridiculous, but it's the truth. Sober mind. A sober, a mind. sober, pure mind connected to God, that is the only peace that you will find. And when you're on those drugs, it gives you a sense of that because for a moment, you forget about all the problems of this world. Do a freaking fast. You will forget about every problem that's been haunting you, been daunting you, and traumatizing you. It's like staring in the mirror. Like when I was on shrooms, I would just stare at the mirror and be like, oh, like, I would like analyze my body, but like when you go on a fast and you get rid of that and you can do that without it. I'm so cool. You're like, like, I'm just you're like, 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 oh my God. Big me. Like, I just, I'm the best entertainment there is. Like I, oh, you go into your, you. I'm you, just so chill. Like I'm so cool. I, I love, my, I love everything about me. I love all my mess ups. I love my, when I burp and I burp in front of a girl and I do something embarrassing. I love when I say dumb stuff. I just, oh, the amount of self love you get is just beyond this world. Go on a fast. After a fast is good. I would say fasting once a week for at least 36 hours, 48 hours, two days. 24 hours, definitely like one day of the week. Yeah. No food. Like, I can't, I don't know about guaranteeing like 48 hours because it's a long time. Like, you want to, ex I want to exercise. Like I don't like not exercising. I want to go push hard. Like when you replenish your body, you can go back and push and lose more weight. Like yeah. that's what I want to do that. When you replenish your body and get nutrients in there, you can go back and get more cut. You can definitely work on your muscles and get lean mass, mm -hmm. um, shred the fat. Like it helps when you put calories in your body, you can shred more fat um, instead of just relying on like not doing anything. Um, but not doing anything is good sometimes. Just 24 hours just to really like remember what's important, remember God. You won't live on just food alone. Like you shouldn't mm -hmm. live yeah. on food to be your satisfaction. You start to just really come back to yourself because it's so easy nowadays to just jump into the world. Like it's. It's ridiculous how quick the world will try to get your attention, how it'll try to snatch you out. Like within 
four hours of us eating, like we were already like back in our phones. And it's like, oh, I miss when I wasn't in my phone. I miss when I didn't pick it up and be so addicted to what was going on. And so just to make sure we didn't fall back into that habit and that trap, fast, pull away. Pull away from the world completely. You'll start to realize what's truly important and you will be taken yeah. care of. And you'll be taken care of. God is amazing. God bless you all. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys like, comment, anything that you are wondering about on a fast, what you're going to be going through. If you're doing a fast, we're going to pray for you. you. You can do this. We know you can do it. Stay strong. Hold to the faith. Pick up that Bible. Um, pick up your whatever you read. And we're going to tell you to read the Bible. Yeah, we're going to tell you to read the Bible. And if you want coaching from us, you can actually get one-on-one -on -one coaching from us. Or you can join our app and you can get all of our coaching below. You will have access to us you can reach out to us and we can help coach you through anything that you're going through when it comes to your weight loss journey we're here for you guys we've been through it we know how to get to it and we know how to help other people do the same thing and we want to help you we're here for you guys and make sure you guys leave some comments on any questions you have let's get it we love you guys don't, don't wait, wait lose weight, weight. we out